someone who has had an absolutely dominant year, MK Leo. Victorious once again this weekend, but first, let's talk about the melee side of things. It was a birthday party in Toronto, my hometown, Ma not Mango's hometown, but he was celebrating his birthday there in Toronto at Red Bull Adrenaline. He defeated Hungry Box in the Grand Finals, who himself went on a great loser's bracket run to make it to the Grand Finals. Uh, but Mango, turning a lot of heads, he also won at Big House. Uh, a lot of people saying, look, when those rankings come out at the end of the year, Jacob, Mango, Hungry Box is secured number one, but Mango should occupy that number two spot. You're not, you're sort of, no? You're kind of like, uh, no? What are you thinking? He had a really rough beginning of the year. I'm not saying he was bad. He played well, but he also didn't enter in some instances or, or dropped out. If I'm ranking Hungry Box is one, Leffen is two, Mango is three. Leffen did have a very good year. Well, Leffen yes. was really good. Yep. Right, I think that Leffens, he, he had a good 2018, he moved it forward to a good 2019. I would put Leffen as second. Obviously, his win at like Super Smash Con was, that was fantastic. Yeah. I think I think Leffen, it's really interesting. These are the three guys who have been in, who have remained in this conversation in a world where the others, Armada and PPMD and the others have moved away from competing. Mewtwo King also sort of came back a little bit towards the end of the year after taking a break. You know, this was kind of a lull year, at least in the beginning, for Mango and Mewtwo King. I would like to see them compete more in 2020, but the thing is, is like, let's be real, it's a really difficult, like, the fighting game scene to both make it, make money in the fighting game scene from prize earnings and also to sort of uh, keep on your A game. It takes a lot of grinding, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that We've seen every single top player had to deal with this in certain ways, right? Hungrybox has gone from full-time Smash to having a job, but back to full-time Smash and, and trying to just like trying to figure out what makes him happy and what makes him sort of uh, be able to express himself creatively in very diff various well, different ways. Well, let's be clear. He's got that Campbell soup money now. Sure. So Hungry Box is sure. doing just fine. I don't think it's all just financial, though. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's also just trying to figure out like how you separate yourself from the game and get some yeah. stress relief and everything else. I think that they're all trying to deal with that in various different ways. I think that Mango, he has had a good end of the year at Big House and also this weekend at Red Bull. Um, I think moving forward, he is some someone that like we always want. We always want to see him perform well because he's got an incredible story and he also he is also very fun to watch from a game perspective yeah. because he is this sort of technical or not he's not a technical player but more of an instinct player and what I say in that what I mean by that is like he has those moments of how did he do that but it's it's not necessarily that he studied how to do it but he felt it right. and, and you sort of see that in his gameplay um, and he's been the one that leads that sort of play style he is incredibly intriguing um, and I hope that the end of his 2019 shows what his 2020 will be I want to ask you uh, your top five in a second Ooh. but I want to, uh, a very interesting point about Hungry Box because the time that we've spent with Juan, uh, he comes across as a very ambitious, uh, goal-driven, hyper-motivated individual. And anytime we would talk to him, being number one in Melee was of grave concern to him. That was a goal yeah. that he constantly had. Now he's going to have it done for the third year in a row. So now I wonder, once he establishes the record for the longest uh, number one ranking, right, which all signs point to him doing that. Let's be real. Yeah, I think so. I wonder where his motivations will lie in 2020. Will he want the fourth year? Like, will he want to remain at the top of Melee and will that still be his primary motivator? Or will content creation and streaming and opportunities mm -hmm. like the Campbell Soup ad and like hosting like he did at the Esports Awards, I wonder if all of that will now become more of a focus because he's growing that. And, and that will take more of his time because he's been splitting his time very well. But I wonder what will, what will 2020 look like for Hungrybox? I've been around Juan for five years now as a reporter. Uh, I wrote a long profile on him that spanned from interviews uh, ranging in 2017 and 2018, uh, shortly before his Evo. Um, you know, I, and I say this with all due respect, he is someone that is always, his ambition drives his life in the way that he is always looking for the next challenge. 
And I think sometimes when you are like that, as someone myself who is like that in many ways, yep. you can get a little insufferable with yourself, right? Like you get so caught up in the in sort of the wheel, the spoke of the wheels, that that sometimes you like let it drive you a little crazy. And you you like when you when you hit a stagnant point or when you've done the same thing over and over and over again, it's never good enough. And I and I get the impression based off of the, all the interviews I've done with him over the years that he feels that way too. And so I think that. 2020, we will see him do a little bit more of the other opportunity stuff. But I do think that in Melee, he realizes that a lot of his outdoors, or sort of his external success outside of the game stems from his ability in the game, mm. right? Um, and I think that he, he has struggled in the past to find that balance uh, in the sense with traditional work. Right, he's tried to juggle. He obviously has an engineering degree, and he's been an engineer on very and smart off. guy. Yeah, like been, IQ wise, very smart yeah, guy. Yeah, he's been an engineer on and off for the, like last four years. You know, like I said, he's gone full time Smash, full time work, trying to juggle. Right, um, and he's had a lot of sort of emotional up and ups and downs throughout that entire process. Um, I think that now that balance becomes less that, and now becomes external opportunity and in game opportunity. Yeah. See, I think, like, like let's go to uh, uh, Zero signing with Facebook Gaming, right? Hungrybox could very well be the next member of the Smash community to have a deal like that. And if I'm Hungrybox, I wonder if I sign a deal with Twitch, if I sign a deal with Mixer, or if these conversations have already happened. I do feel like he is uh, at that elite tier influencer in the Smash community that he can certainly drive those kind of conversations. Yeah, I wouldn't put him in that conversation. I would not put him as the number one person in Melee to do that. I actually would say Mango is the one that, that I would look to because he's had such, like, most of his 2019 has been influencer stuff rather mm -hmm. than game stuff. Um, well, I meant the streaming. No, no, yeah. I mean, okay. Mango's a fantastic streamer, too. Yeah. I, I think that Hungrybox, his stream does well. I, like, Zero is a whole nother tier. Zero, Zero is just like a content robot, man. Sure. Like, that guy, like, turns a video a day on YouTube while also streaming. It is very impressive. Um, I think that Hungrybox, Hungrybox's sort of career lives more in commentating and advertising and co not necessarily, like, game content, but rather other types of content. So, like, the hot ones, uh, hot ones thing that he does, yeah. the, the the wings thing, um, that's really interesting. That type of stuff, or like the um, great with collaborations. What was what he used to do? Like the he they did it for a little bit. The uh, Team Liquid um, food series where they like went around and traveled and ate food okay. in various different places. That sort of stuff. Yeah, he's on a team that has an entire content house in house. Mm -hmm. I think they will maximize that to him. Honestly, if I was Juan and I understand he has a very good stable family base in Florida, I would up and move to Los Angeles. <laughs> Just because he might get more opportunities. Yeah, those way. opportunities will be there, and uh, well, without and, and honestly, there like there's a good Smash team there. That's where Mango and uh, or that's where Mango and Lucky and all those others are. Um, I think that that would be a good opportunity. So rather asking you uh, your top five, uh, I'm going to ask all of you for your top five. Let us know either in the comments or tweet us at ESPN underscore esports uh, in the chat, wherever it is. Let us know who your top five is in Melee this year. I will ask this before we move to Ultimate. Who do you think will be the biggest risk to Hungrybox's number one position in Melee in 2020? Ooh, that's a good question. My, my immediate answer is Leffen. My, he's not even a dark horse because he's so good, but Manga. Like, he, it. He's riding it, the momentum of the second half of 2019. Correct, yeah. and also, if he really commits and hunkers down, like, he is so good. Uh, he is so good at, at Smash. He's got some a the, Falco the, and Fox sort of routine that he's going, you know, bringing in Fox to, to do cleanup near the end where uh, yeah. it, it seemed to be working for him in tournaments. Yeah, I mean, he, like, some of the most exciting matches of the entire 17-year lifespan or 18-year lifespan of Super Smash Brothers Melee competitive come from him because he's just one of those players, like I said, he is, he is an instinct-type player, and you see that in his play that is incredibly exciting. When he buckles down, man, he, he does some work. Yeah. So I think that Leffen is the one that I would give it to if we're just going off, you know, consistency. Um, but Mango's the one that, in terms of raw talent, if, if he continues to, continues to commit, mm -hmm. it's scary times.